Hey, welcome to the Rubber Ducky Show, and we've got some wonderful people with us tonight. As Dr. Suck won't say, good morning, beautiful people. <laughs> if he was here. Oh, I told you guys to mute YouTube, and then I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Every time. Do what I say, not what I do. <laughs> okay, we have a very special person with us tonight, and that's Big Jeff. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Hey, Rubber Ducky, doing great. Well, I'm so glad you chose to join us tonight. Um, and who else do we have? We have Lily Pat. Hi, Lily. Hey, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Hi, Sammy. Hi there. How are you? We're doing good. We're doing good. Hi, BB. Hey. So, we were in a wonderful discussion last uh, Friday night. No, I'm no, sorry. Saturday. Saturday night. So, here, let me back up. Yeah, start with Friday. Start with the beginning. <laughs> okay. So I had a family emergency, which, of course, that's a private thing, so I won't go into detail, that had us up to about 5 a.m. Um, Thursday, Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, so it was 5 a.m. on Friday morning. And then I had to work, got home from work, and decided, well, should we try to do a live? I'm exhausted. but And baby's like, well, we have a storm coming. And I'm like, I heard about some storm. And she's like, 85 mile an hour hurricane winds. And I'm like, get out of town. This is Wisconsin. We get hurricane. tornadoes. Hurricane. Yeah. yeah, we get tornadoes, but we don't get hurricanes. We're landlocked. And she's, what'd you say to me, baby? Well, that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, that's what they said. You're like, are you sure you're not listening to Florida's news? <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to tell you now, when baby... If you ever have the honor of being told by BB that you need to, to take shelter because 85 mile an hour winds are coming and sustained at that, please do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just take that advice and run with it as quick as you can. I said, so, oh, they're going to be there in 10 minutes. She's like, oh, I'm going to get off Discord and go film this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you guys know me. I, I tend to, you know, I tend to... uh uh, try to live in the moment. I'm very, uh, how do we put it, spontaneous. Yeah. And I've been known to storm chase. Never, never again in my own home. Number one, when you're in your own home and you decide to film a storm, if you're <laughs> in the city like I am, a little town, you only have a diameter of about three inches of view <laughs> of the storm. <laughs> it's your backyard up straight. Well, by then it's on you. And that's what happens. So I was watching with my film and I have the film of it. I can't air it because it's complete swear words from the beginning <laughs> to the end and absolute havoc in the house. Um, it involves me thinking I'm going to film this thing and I go to film it and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a dark back. Wow, wow that's really bad. And then within two minutes, the real cloud hits and it's black as night and um, the winds, 85 miles an hour sustained, hit our um, our block is the best way to put it. It blew the windows out of the, the house next to us. Um, it dropped the lightning that we had during this, dropped a tree across the road so there was no passing. And that was on its way within, you know, 30 feet of my house. And um, I had Widowmaker limbs all over. The city had to come to our yard and for the last few days they actually had to cut up everything and put it out there. So it knocked out the power in half of our towns. So we have two towns that are connected. They're little tiny like a thousand people per town on the average. Um, so it knocked out one town's power and so when I went to do my makeup live, we decided to do it Saturday night. We still had people on that town that didn't have power. We were just fortunate to have it. When they went to repair it right in the middle of the live, they dropped all power on both cities, both towns. So we had no power for a while and I couldn't get back on and do the live. And I'm so sorry. It was a wonderful point in the conversation. I was so engrossed in it. Um, well, but I and me apologize. and Spokesman kept going when you fell out because we had no idea what happened. And, and you guys thought you were on away. air. Yeah, and you guys missed everything we were saying. And yeah, then we were just there. Then Donkey comes back in and she says, wow, my power blinked off for a minute. And she's like, but we're good now. And she's talking away and we're talking away and probably 10 minutes has gone by. At least. And Lily goes, Lily goes, uh, guys, 
uh, are we still on the live? Because I don't see it anymore. And I look, I look up and we have never been back on air ever since we got dropped. Yeah. Um, lesson learned there. But, you know, there there is a lesson of public awareness here. I'm always up for that. So I want to tell you something. Um, when your 15-year-old or 16-year-old comes up and says, Mom, I think we should really go to the basement. Just go. Just do that. Because me thinking I could handle it as an adult, um, when the cloud hit and the wind, literally, I called it, I still refer to it as a first breath because it was like all of a sudden it happened. There was no warning. I only had to go 35 feet to get to my basement and I didn't think I was going to make it in time. It was that horrific. Uh, it turned night in the middle of the day, turned black as night and storm um, was 85 mile an hour sustained winds is hurricane force. So what I saw was literally as I was running by throwing animals into the basement with my son, hoping that one of my fur babies isn't going to get killed in the house. All I could see was horizontal limbs flying by my house. It looked like just some Wizard of Oz Dorothy moment. And um, like I said, the entire video, it basically is me going, oh, wow, that's dark. And then you hear this horrific sound and me scream the F word. And then it goes, hell breaks loose. All you see on the camera is my house in a thousand different directions as I'm running with my phone screaming, get in the basement, grab animals, run, run. <laughs> I am horrified because I know that this is not okay. This is not normal. Um, so take heed on the warnings. They were putting it out there. Um, they were giving us plenty heads up, you know, that there was a storm coming and it was my stupid butt out there looking at the storm going, oh, well, it's a chance to get a good, good shot, you know, and take a cool picture that I may never <laughs> see again in my life. I've never seen 85 miles. Yeah. Well, when it's blowing windows out and dropping trees, it's not so fun then. Well, I, I don't have that luxury. We don't have a tornado siren out here. We're out in the middle of nowhere in a cornfield, in a trailer. We don't even have a foundation. We oh have a safety straps that strap it into the dirt, the earth. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just I have glad to watch nobody was the radar. hurt. No, there were no lives that were taken. Nobody was truly injured. There's a few minor scrapes, basically, from people running to shelter. Um, we did have house go down. One house in our community completely collapsed. Nobody was home, and they didn't mm -hmm. have animals. So that's rare. Numerous of barns barns many 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 barns were flattened it was not a tornado it was flat line winds um that ripped over um the highway in a straight force of 85 mile an hours which when 85 mile an hour hits a semi and it's at the right angle on the semi and it's on the side it flips them and that's what we saw is a lot of semis on their sides even more semis than cars because of how a flat line works with such a, a large surface like that but that's what happened but i'm glad to get us all back on track um and we're going to be talking about the other half of cuss road that we were originally talking about so if you haven't had a chance um there's several videos out there you can go watch we have one on cuss road and so do others and we're we want to dig into that a little bit but before we can get there we need to kind of Take a moment to just clear the air because there has been a little hubbub out there. Um, one thing I will say is throughout the video on board eight, which is actually recorded within the video, if you're interested in listening to the original clip of the original poster, we have put that in the movie that was recorded um, that gives credit to the person that originally got a hold of this and put this online. Now. If other people have used this clip, that's their business, not my business. I think that's fantastic. I think more people should share this clip, bring an awareness to the case is what we're supposed to do. Um, for those of you that believe like we do, that information should be shared, I thank you guys because you're the ones that matter. You're the ones that are actually contributing to getting Brendan and Stephen in the safety net of the world watching. And those of you that think it's a great idea to sit on documents and um, get cobwebs on them and produce them one at a time here and there um, and hide the information, you're the ones that are slowing this shit up. Okay. Um, so, oh, that reminds me. I swore. Yeah. This is Curse of Cuss. 
we've had our feathers ruffled really, really hard because my channel got accused of, actually, I personally got accused of making money off the channel. And uh -huh. that's apparently the only reason I do this job. And that's why my, my feathers are ruffled. You can say a lot of things about me and you can discredit me any way you want. But I went clear and clean and I published my top video financial report off of YouTube. And guess what? There's a whole, what, 12 bucks there? My you YouTube subscription it. is you more than that. It. You posted it on Twitter. I sure did. It's and on her Twitter account. My YouTube premium that allows me <clears throat> the YouTube the YouTube premium that allows us the right to be able to or the privilege to be able to do a live. The premium costs more than that. So I'm having to pay YouTube to be able to do these for you guys. So let's think of where else am I getting money from? Guess what? We do get donations. I've had six individuals donate to our cause. And I thank them from the bottom of my heart. But they'll be the first ones to tell you it's not enough to cover all the cost of this case. We pay monthly for a website and we pay for an, uh, an email site that allows us to mail the subscribers as separate things. Just the email alone monthly is $12.99 to have the campaign that we have right now. The website alone costs us well it's about $130 a year. Luckily, that's already paid for for this year. Well, I shouldn't say for this year. We have like, say, I think like six months left, seven months yet. Um, we pay for news car, um, archive newspaper account, which cost us $138. We pay for FOIA documents. Those, it depends on what document. I can't even tell you. Um, we pay for background reports on individuals in this case because it tells us addresses, leads to figure out how phone this numbers. stuff connects. Phone numbers. Um, no one associates. That can be $500 a year. And I'm not kidding. But curiosity minds that want to help the case you, you tend pay to for just PowerPoint. do it. I pay for PowerPoint that allows me to do this. I subscribe monthly to it. Um, I also have to subscribe, like I said, to YouTube. I also subscribe to be able to edit my videos. It costs me $24.99 a month on the program that I currently use because it gives me ability to edit the videos properly, properly and I can understand the program. I then have to pay for a, a, not a video editor, but an audio editor on a subscription monthly that allows me to produce sound on the video that I can actually take away from something like we just did in the cuss video. I can take the soundtrack and I can apply it to a video. So I pay for that. I can keep going. There's no point. It's depressing me to listen to it. it makes me want to quit the case, to be honest, to feel that unsupported and give that much as a single mom with no with other source of income than my job that I work every single week for 38 hours a week. I have never had child support in my life and no handouts from anybody other than those that have helped me out a few times on this channel. I but every day, in this, we're you in guys this inspire me to keep going. Avery. We're That's in this right. for Stephen and Brandon. That's right. That's and why I do it. And you also I put in at least a good 80 hours a week on this case. Oh, yeah. For real. Yep. So I don't toot my own horn because it isn't about my face. It isn't about my name. It isn't about who I am. But when it gets made to the point that I'm being discredited and falsely accused of benefiting off of Stephen and Brendan, I draw the gosh dang line. I've had enough. I have had enough. Unsubscribe if you think that I am wrong in what I'm saying. Because I treasure you guys. As much as I treasure you guys, it really is about Brendan and Stephen. They're the real reasons that I do this. Because if it wasn't for Brendan and Stephen still in jail, if they were already out and we were just trying to crack this case, I've been sideswiped so many times. And so have the ducks. We would have walked away. Yeah. But we're here for these guys. You know why? Because of you guys inspiring us to remember that it's always about Brendan. It's always about Stephen. This is public access and public acknowledgement means that 
all public access. Everything on the internet is open for everyone to use at any time. If you are seeking credit in this case for your work, you should not be in this case. Move That's along. Right. Move along. I will be honest, and every one of the duckies here can tell you, the first two months of my channel when I talked about having RD researchers, I didn't have one. I made that up to protect myself. So Manitowoc wouldn't come hunt my butt down and say, oh, I can shut that one person up, and it's all over. I now did it you to got protect duckies myself. Now, now I got lovely. real duckies. Yep. So talk about not wanting credit. Yeah, get in the real game. You won't want credit. When you know you're making a difference, and all of a sudden your stuff is getting hacked, and it's not by some YouTuber, but it's a bigger fish, you start getting worried. And yes, that kind of stuff has happened, not just to me, by many people. So that's my soapbox today. Um, my feathers got severely ruffled. I have a little, bit, I have a little now, bit of a soapbox. Bibi's turn. Bibi's turn. Yes, I have a little bit of soapbox. Here's your talking stick. I'm going to mute. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you. Um, during all this, we have also been accused of stealing others' work, not giving credit. Well, if I took all of Ducky's videos and I went through them all and named, took clips of every place that we named people who we used as sources, it would probably be at least a half an hour, if not an hour long video of just little clips of us thanking people for their research that we used. And during all this, they have targeted Ducky and they have targeted Zoe. And they have said that this is them and they did this. And the Cuss Road video exists that we did on Friday or Saturday, excuse me, on the 20th exists because I found a little snippet in a Facebook room and I ran with it. I took a screenshot of it and I brought it back and it was about the ambulance and Teresa's Hobbox name being mentioned on the 7th in the video in the audio so we ran with it now i'm sorry if somebody else some other youtubers seen that same post and they because they are in that group too and they ran with it also that's their prerogative just as it was our prerogative but i'm the catalyst it wasn't ducky and it wasn't zoe so if anybody wants to be mad and set fire to anyone have at me i don't care I got to add something to that. First of all, we did give credit in the video to where we got the source from. The audio. Right to yes. the direct source yes. to the audio. It is in the middle of the film, and it has a link in there. And yep. you, can, you can actually post that in your little browser, and it'll take you right to that. And it's so been posted we, there for 11 often, months. And yes, it has that, been posted <laughs> there for 11 months. Can Correct. I re reiterate something? Sammy, here's your talking stick, love. Okay. All I have to say about it is this, that it, that information is out there and it's accessible to ev each and every one of us. And we're all on different teams, but we're still playing for the boys and we're still supposed to use that information to help to spread awareness. And I think that it's more important what you do with the information and that you are doing it. Don't sit on your haunches and mull something over. Get to it. Do something with it. We're not going to be upset when somebody comes out with their own cuss road. Go for it. Everybody needs to be putting stuff out there. That's all I have to say. Yeah. In fact, I encourage anyone with any information that is public access, share it if it benefits Stephen and Brendan, period. Just share it. Keep that, keep that going, you guys. So now... Has everybody feel a little better that we cleared the air and we got over why the live crashed and and Oh, I'm good. I awesome. was good when they started. It's all okay. good. I know B why I'm in this. BB feels responsible, but she was just bringing a, a bringing something off of Jack Smam's gossip group where a lady had posted it on a comment about a rav. BB found it. She was like, "Did you see this? Did you hear this?" I'm like, "We've listened to that in the past." She's like, "Listen again." I listened to it again and I think they're saying something about a cell phone. Well, and then Zoe's like got excited. She went and found a picture and the next thing you know, we were building a video and we put it out and we thought we were doing fantastic. But some people wanted to um how do I put this? 
are all about the credit. So whatever it is, it is what it is, but I'm not going to apologize going forward. If I don't mention that you are the one that thought of this in the future, because I don't, I didn't even mean to do that. I mean, I hope that when I tell you guys over and over that I don't get all this information that I just crawl the web that you guys understand I'm grabbing, you know, a hundred pieces of information to connect them all together. Go back to the link, Jeff. Yeah. Just go back to the link. Okay. Oh, it might not let him because his icon's still in the room. He may have to shut oh, down and restart shoot. again. Yeah. Because uh -oh. his icon's in the, if he can't get back in the room, Okay. It will not let you go back in. You have in. to click the link you, again. You have to shut down your phone and restart it and then okay. take the link. He'll figure okay. it out, I hope. Um, <laughs> so now what all started this whole thing was um, Cuss Road. And one of the big things about Cuss Road, as we saw in the video, was that in the middle of the road, you can see this spot. Originally, we thought it was just a really dark, burnt spot on the road. But then, where is that one picture? Let me go grab the it. The one Dr. Silkman got? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, there is, let me see. I'll share my desktop. Oh, I didn't share. I took a screenshot. Never mind. I'll go back and do it. Um, I'm back. There's a little. Welcome back, Jeff. I knew you'd figure it out. I had faith well, the, in you. The funny thing is, I have an Android phone. Android's made by Google. I have a pic. I have a Pixel phone, right? And you think they'd make it easy for Pixel users? Well, I'm, I'm really ensuring you're going to get demonetized by by Zoom, not Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, we already did. <laughs> um. Okay. So when you look at where is that? I'm sharing my desktop now. I want a good, clean picture of it. Okay, here's a perfect example. On this screen that was in the, the movie, you're going to see, on the right, you can see this really dark spot on Cuss Road. The first thing, and we've made a video about this in the past, quite a while ago, that I thought was, doesn't that look like a burn spot? And don't those circles look like burn barrels and blah, 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 Yeah, that's blah. all we've had on our mind, yeah. <laughs> Remember that, you guys? Yep. That's what we all thought, right? Oh, but yeah. then look at the left. There's no burn spot. <laughs> so the first thought came to mind to me was, oh, this happened before. More sinister, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was more sinister in my head because my first thought is, oh, my God, the cops found it before it was burned and then they did it. They burn the floor or the road. You know, this is what went through my little mind. Um, but the more we've investigated, um, let me go see real quick if I can grab that other picture. Ugh. Halls and mirrors. Let's stop that for a minute. Okay. Let me go yeah, grab my the instant, other picture. My instant thought on it also was... <sighs> Oh, my God, they did burn it. Look, there's no spot there. They're standing in the spot. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that came to my mind, too, is that they were making, you know, in my mind, I had already, um, how do I put it? I had already kind connected of worked them. This, Yeah, connected <laughs> the dots. I'm like, all right, they're thinking about where they're going to burn the rab. <laughs> you know? They're like, right here looks like a perfectly good spot right, to burn right, this right. shit. Right. <laughs> So I'm going to see if I can find, holy cow, you duckies and I, we talk a lot. I'm scrolling our boards yeah. here. A thousand pictures of pizza going by. Yes, we don't only talk a lot here. We also talk a lot in discourse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To totally. I'm trying to find it. Now, could, could, you, could you clarify the, the date that that picture with the Seven. big black spot was supposed because it was a flyover, obviously. Right. right? We oh, think we it don't was a know news, when the flyover we, happened. We think it might have been a news camera though, yeah. that flew over, not the police. Right, right, right. Right. Because the picture was still in that blurry because the police seemed to have less, or better, not as good equ equipment as the news crews. So there are a few videos that are better in the flyovers from news crews 
than the ones from the police. And what about the date from the picture that was on the left? That is, um, my best guess is that that would happen in um, tandem with the call. Because that's when the investigators are explaining on the call about the things they're doing down on Cusp Road. And it matches the photograph quite well. Okay. So that's our best guess. But, you know, that's all it is. We don't really know. I mean, they could say that it was the 7th that all these calls took place. Maybe they really happened on the 3rd for all we know. I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy, but they really don't leave us with a lot of um, trust. Well, if they fill their paperwork saying. out properly and if they give us information, then we wouldn't have to fill in the blanks and make assumptions. Right. Colburn took more pictures than Time Magazine, but we don't have one of them, right? Yeah, oh, right. for heaven's <laughs> sakes, totally. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, but uh, it's like Colburn absolutely made sure that he was replacing the person taking the evidence photos so that way evidence photos didn't get taken right <laughs> i think he forgot to put film in his camera because back then digital cameras you know they were a little bit pricey and knowing the way they like to you know kind of cut the corners here with their equipment um i'm thinking that colburn just was like oh i don't really need film in the camera i just need it to make some clicking sounds <laughs> So, so by the so, end of the day, we, we believe that picture from the left was from a police uh, photo, not from a from, not from a news organization. Yeah, well, the, yeah because okay. because of the fact oh, they, they that were, they, there would be no news down there. They if they're not going to let the cadaver oh, yeah. dogs oh, that's go. Right. That's right. That's right. Yes. Okay. Thank if you. If cadaver they dogs can't only, go there, only crime lab and um, Joshua Dunn is allowed down, and to black off yep. the road and yeah, yeah. But I'm thinking that since they've got the crime lab, they're not letting the cadaver dogs down. Um, and that comes right from the sheriff Pogel himself. That even the can't have you can't have cadaver dogs down here. It's a crime scene for God's sakes, right? <laughs> what, what an asinine statement, right? Oh, there I go. <laughs> ah, that's okay. We're on. We're, we <laughs> have we uh, to we uncheck can. every box. If you want to swear, go ahead. Uh, I warn you all, as listeners, we're. We had our feathers ruffled, and we took away everything on the channel that keeps us from swearing and getting in trouble for it. Um, we can't say the F word or the S word because we don't want to get, like, kicked off YouTube. But if we say damn, oh, well. Or hell, oh, well. I'm frustrated. Right. They're frustrated. So right. It's um, a missing person. We're still looking for the victim, potentially, right? And uh, you would God, think. For, God forbid you bring a bloodhound down there. That could potentially lead you there. Whatever you do, it's a crime scene. It just this doesn't make any sense. Truthfully, it doesn't. So I don't know. Can you guys see my screen with the cuss road? And now we've got a different picture up and it's a red car and two like tan cars with a guy in a green jacket. I'm trying to see if you. Yeah, you should be oh, able yeah. to see it. Yeah. Yeah. OK, look at the red car that's sitting there. And look at the shadow the way it is. And then if you notice under the car, it's clean as a whistle. There's nothing on the pavement. There's no burn spot, nothing. Now, my question is, okay, when we're up on this aerial view, we all know back then cameras weren't as pixelated as we have got them now. Is it possible that that red car is what we really are seeing and not a burn spot on cuffs? I'd say 50 50. Yeah, okay. 50 50. What do you think, Big Jeff? He's thinking. <laughs> what we losing? For a moment. I, I think he's know. muted. Okay. Yeah, but well, he was the last time when we lost him. Can, I, can, I, see, can I see the aerial picture again? Sure. Do you want me to do like a little side by side of all of them? Yeah. Yeah, that would be good because I. Uh, I'm, okay, I, let me see if I can get this figured be, yeah, out. How that is car. that, you guys? A little better? Well, actually, you'd probably want it closer to the one. Oh, come on. Come on now. Come along. There. I don't think it's the same thing. Okay. It's too All dark. Right. Uh, it's too dark. Why else? The shadows. You don't aren't see right. any. You don't see any red. 
at all in that yeah. other. Okay. Now, I'm maybe, maybe, maybe the red, of it. Maybe gonna, the red gonna, car is to cover for it. I'm going to show you a different picture, and I'm going to enlarge it really big. And I want you to look at this area to tell me if this makes any. Well, can I do it before I promise them I can't deliver? Hold on. I think YouTube slows black, me up. I think it's a black SUV that's that black spot. Asana says, no, it doesn't look the same. And Kelly Cowell says the shape is different. Okay. Well, I'm just asking. You know, I want us to really think this says, through. Mayor says, that's a burn spot. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. I, I'm not jumping the gun and saying anything yet. I want to know you guys' opinion. Because I think it matters what we all think here. But I can't get it to, I can't get the um, PowerPoint to work now. Well, I'm on YouTube, and I wanted to enlarge a picture for you really bad. Deborah Walden says it looks like a kidney bean shape. It does look like a kidney bean shape. Uh, oh, now PowerPoint's working. Jeannie well, says maybe. burn spot. It will not let me enlarge this picture. That is so weird. Okay. Well, since we can't do that, I'm not going to fuss about it. We'll go to a different spot. Let's go here to... Where's the other one I wanted to look at? Right here. Okay, now look for, I know the other one's very maybe, pixelated. Maybe whatever they burned, they hauled in in the red car. Well, if you guys, if the theory, if we're walking with the theory, let's walk that for a minute, that that is a burn spot. Then the picture on the left would be pre-taken. And that would mean the police would be quite aware of the burned spot because they would have had to be there when it was created. The only people that are allowed down on Cuss Road are the law enforcement, the crime lab, and Josh Redan. Now, why is Josh Redant allowed down uh, there? Because it's his property? Thinking. Well, they wouldn't let any of the Avery's back on the property when they were searching that property. Correct. Brilliant point. Uh oh, there's that word. Uh, work just uh, fell out no. of BB's mouth. <laughs> Lyra, dark side of the moon. The curve of the road does not add up, and the line of the unusual tree does not add up. Something strange about the pics. Hmm. Let's look from a. Uh, oh, I wish I could could enlarge. You know what? I can. I can enlarge this. Hold on. I'm gonna take a new picture. Of what I want to take a picture of, and then we'll enlarge it a different way. Okay. Well, I also had thought that about the the road didn't look the same, and we've been down there. And okay, we have some pictures of it from All right. when we went on our trip. But, yeah, but I don't know. It, it's I'm trying it's to the only roundabout I, can... I know of that has the the two dirt roads coming off the end of it. So I'd say it has to be the same hmm. location. Well, if you line up the actual property, it does work. Because I have flipped the picture around in that one scraggly tree on board 13. You can see I'll use my cursor right here. You see this scraggly tree right here? The pine tree. That pine tree that has hardly anything on it, just it's curved and all stupid. It's right here in this. Hmm. That is it. Now, so it is the same place. But now when you look at the right on this picture compared to this picture, which we have two different boards, this picture looks like they're doing something and... It doesn't look like a vehicle to me. Now, see, to me, it does look like a vehicle. And yeah, it looks. It looks like. Yeah, it looks I, like like a little SUV or something. I don't know. Okay. And I so, wish I had a way to get you a pick that I have that is enhanced it a little bit. You can tell it is a vehicle. Okay. Uh, Let me see if I can. Oh, I wish I could make this huge. Is, isn't wish. there a slider? If if you do if you do uh, on yeah, the there normally is. Down, it's not working. Pull down view zoom. No, no I've tried. It's it's okay. with YouTube PowerPoint. It's not allowing those extra little. It can go up to one hundred eight percent, and it stops. 
I can still choose a different slide to look at, but I can't like do any of the functions on it for some stupid reason. But in this picture, um, on this corner part. Zoe said, um, let's see, she said, we should try to find out if the street was renewed. And then she said, if it wasn't, there should still be the spot if there was some. No, it burn. was redone. It was when not. We were there. It, it was. was okay. Yeah. It wasn't There's the same grade. Yeah, it was repaved. It uh, does not have the same light colorization on it. It's very much darker than this. At, at some point in time over the 13 or whatever years, they have. Well, yeah. The roads here buckle all the time from winter, from when it gets so cold. And mm -hmm. we have uh, horrible potholes all the time and cracks and uh, rip opens. And yeah. Yeah, so, weather road. Weather yeah. road. Okay, so then you guys, we have, we have, okay, let's grab this because this is going to, not this one. No, 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 no. So this one looks like a vehicle, you said. Let's grab it. All right. Right there. Now let's take that and let's find the one that's the big smudge on the road. Here we go. Let's put them side by side. We'll give it a minute for YouTube to catch up. What do you guys think about that? I can't even make it bigger. Oh, no, I can't. I can just enlarge the thing. Yeah, those don't even, they don't even look right as far as by comparison the two. I'm even trying to see how the cars are all parked. And if you'll notice on the right, it isn't the same. There's not that same car in front of that yellow vehicle that big yellow truck there well no it's not the same photograph yes it's not, I know. It's not the even the same timeline that's so right. I'm, I'm not asking that it's the same timeline what i was asking is this car or i say this car this spot over here versus this spot over here um this you guys are saying car does everybody yep. think that looks like a car What's a, so. what's a listener say? Let's go take a peek at that. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll tell you. It says here, Mary's, oh, uh, wait a minute. Nope, Crockett. <laughs> he says cuss. Okay, Jeannie Okay, wrote, Jeannie's saying car. car not burnt, car burnt. Yep, that's right. Is there a way for me to get you a pick, Ducky, that you can grab real quick and bring in? Yeah, throw it in Discord. I'll go grab it. Okay. I can jump on Discord and off real quick and grab pictures. So if you want to throw it in the members only area, I'd be happy uh, to. Deborah uh, says both these picks were on the same day, right? Well, we don't, don't know. We have no know. idea. We assume. I wish. But... I wish we knew. Oh, don't say assume. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> don't say I that. know. I know. Okay. Make an ass out of you and me. Yeah. Okay. When you blow it up a little bit, you can see there's it's a car. It has a license plate on it. Okay. It is um, it's, it is still a little fuzzy, but it's much better. I will go look at that. But even okay. even if it is a car, it, the top the, the the different top view appears to have stuff in it besides that car because of the splotchiness around that car. The other cars don't have that splotchiness around. That's what I was it, equipment. You know, or, or people, they could or be people, people standing there, yeah. Because I did notice in one of the pictures, people did kind of look like those barrel things in some of them. Yeah. yeah. And I also looked really hard at one picture where it looks like the white big truck thing has its back doors open, and there was like a lot of black in the back of it. I even wondered if it was a body bag, but it appears to be people. Yeah. Like standing ones or bent over ones, or. Well, Lyra said that think... the the shape of the road looks different slightly. Deborah said, thinking it must be because of the yellow truck. And Sashmir says, is there actual footage of the flying around, or is it just stills? I think it's, it's just, just stills. stills. Yeah. We were lucky to get. All of the aerial footage was sort of. Uh, 
con- confiscated by Kratz, wasn't it? All, all aerial footage. A from lot all of the, stuff's uh, been expunged. Uh, that was there three and a half years ago when we first started this. Uh, it has become harder and harder to find. And instead of big, long interviews of people like the Hombox and stuff, it's just all chopped yeah, down little short, pieces little now. Short, yeah, short little clips. So a lot of stuff is no longer accessed. They've been slowly expunging stuff, I believe. Well, so let's think about hemorrhage. let's think about this. So they mentioned cell phone. I heard that. Did you guys hear anything else? I didn't hear anything else other than the, the cell phone part. Burn barrel, cell phone, debris. In yes. That one call. And and Teresa Halbach's name. Yes, and I do believe they said, but the voice cuts in right after Teresa Halbach. But I believe that it said. Teresa Halbach Avery, blah, blah, blah. Okay. I didn't hear, I didn't like listen real intently on that part, so I can't say it. I did many times. I did, but I think it was west of Avery. That's what I heard. See, and that would imply that they found something of hers west of Avery's. Well, they said west of Avery's many times, but in that one call, I think he said Teresa Halbach. Avery, blah, blah, blah. I, I kept playing it over and over again, trying to black yeah. out what the one guy was saying. To really look at it and see. Um, let's see. Let's go up here and see. We did the kidney bean spot. Um, Ashira says, or they could have just put some new concrete on the road to fix the street. Well, actually, Ashira, we went physically there, and it's been repaved, love. It's been re black topped. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actual asphalt. Um, Ducky, a little bit back, Crockett was asking a question. Oh, um, thank you. Uh, let me see. I'm going up. He, however, if access to and from Steve's trailer to Cuss Road is easy, how does that not play as a negative or positive for him being, for him, depending on the Great side question. you're on? Well, yeah. That I will take a minute to explain that. Sorry, um, I missed it. Um, <laughs> no, 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 that's the right. state of Wisconsin based the entire case on the story that the prosecution fed the jury, and that's what they made their decision on. So if if they base their entire story that Stephen never left his property, they are then not really able to point at anybody else that could have went into Stephen's trailer and murdered her. Nobody else is going to be in Stephen's garage murdering her. Nobody else is going to be in the back of his, uh, right by his house murdering her. So it can only be Stephen. You can't point at anybody else. That's how that worked. So Yeah, and you now, can't worship both ways. On. You can't try him for... Killing her on his property and killing her off his property. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is, now, if the story changes, and we're going to say that the victim was killed in a location that is not just accessed by Stephen, but accessed by other individuals, then... The investigation naturally, in a, in a logical way, would be expanded to those individuals that have access to that location. And it's no longer about Stephen. It's about anybody that doesn't have an alibi. It's about investigating what they were doing at the time of the person's disappearance and so forth. And we know we have a handful of individuals specifically, plus it puts the entire narrative that was sold to the jury that they based their entire decision on a lie. That's why. And that if, is, if I could interject one thing as well, Robert Ducky, if, he could, that if, he, if he may not, if he asked that question, he may not be aware of the fact that the cadaver dog had a very strong hit on the red trailer in the deer camp and wanted to take the owner West towards Cuss Road. Right, so this is yes. not, it's not just speculation that something went on in Cus Road. The oh, cadaver it's dogs, more than the, it's the more cadaver than, dogs yeah. took them to Cus Road. That's such a great point, Jeff. So we look at the cadaver dogs. What are they doing? They're in the quarry. They're hitting the cadaver dog hits on. I believe it's a front loader, the conveyor, and a pile of dirt about eight or sorry gravel, eight feet up on the pile. Then. As the cadaver dog goes along, we then have a cadaver dog that is at the Randant 
deer camp or Redon, however, you know, tomato, tomato, um, at the deer camp, okay, the deer camp has a red trailer. Now, guilters want you to think when they say little red trailer, they're talking about Stephen's little red trailer. But that's not what they say. They say the little red trailer at deer camp. And there's only one red trailer there, and it's owned by Redont family. So what Jeff is explaining is the cadaver dogs have come along and they're hitting on the back stoop of the little red trailer at deer camp. They hit on it. Now, they're only going to respond to human blood or deceased human. That's what Julie Kramer explained to us. She's the handler of the dog. Then the dog continues on a very intent path. And they use the word intense as their wording, not mine. Um, and it leads it, like Jeff's saying, right directly to Cuss Road. We have crime scene taped off. We have two incidences that happen. And they try to make it sound like one and there was nothing to see. So the first time all the law enforcement respond to Cuss Road, they say that they dug around a stump and they were like, well, nothing to see here. Take the crime tape down. Everybody go back to your jobs. But the second time, that they respond on the same day the cadaver dog has made his way down there and by then um we are seeing crime tape put up already we're seeing people that are down there investigating something and the the dog that's led right there intensely is forcing his way past the tape the handlers holding him back trying to get him to stay and this dog is intent on getting to something that he's on to a scent that he's on and he's responding. So when the investigators are telling the scent, the cadaver dog owner to take the dog and go, she's like, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. My dog's on something. You get a hold of Pagel. You get a hold of the sheriff. I want it coming from high up because he's on something. Sheriff Pagel says, or Pogel says, um, this is a crime scene. You can't have the dog down here. And, and think of what you're asking people to believe if the cadaver dogs hit on uh, Cuss Road, but they did not hit on Stephen's trailer. Um, that wow. that Stephen, who, who who wanted to kill this girl, uh, yeah. and somehow ended up burning her in his burn pit, which the dogs did not hit on. Uh, that he what fo followed her to Cuss Road. That there's no you know, what, what what's the scenario if the if the dogs are to be, who don't lie are to be believed. Well, that, that's and why it's wouldn't so important. the dogs, I mean, if you commit a murder somewhere else, but you go back to your trailer and you change your clothes and um, all this kind of stuff, or, or even you change your, you go in your house totally naked thinking you're free of the DNA, you're still have gotten your car. You still have this opportunity. The dogs are going to learn on something if you've committed a murder and you have any DNA of that person on you. They've already Let's alerted the dog. They want the to have. They, they want to have her having been killed at Stephen's house. Yes. Right. Well, and yeah. there's one point I want to make here. Yeah, dogs don't lie, but dogs can be, can be tricked, tricked yeah. into telling you a false narrative because we've all taken the tennis ball, showed our dog the tennis ball, got him hyped up, pretended to throw the tennis ball, dropped it behind our back, made a nice, accurate throw, the dog will run after the invisible tennis ball that you didn't throw and be over there searching because he knows that tennis ball is over there. Let's so he's not, not forget, lying, but he's been tricked. Let's not forget cadaver dogs are trained for decomposition and they can smell it more than six feet deep. Yes. Right, right. But if a deer got hit on the road, they're still going to smell no, dead blood. No, they don't go after dead animals. They are trained for human Deceased human and blood, human blood. That's it. They're not trained to alert on a deer, none of that. So with this dog hitting on that back stoop and going to Cuss Road, it is either smelling human blood or it is smelling a deceased victim. Those are our choices that we were given by Julie Kramer. I think the evidence of that too, Rubber Ducky, is there was a deer recently hung in the, the Dassey garage. Yeah, and, and it, it didn't hit on dog, that. It, it didn't hit on that. Okay. No, yeah. no, okay. but only hits, Julie explained it in her report. Um, she actually does a case of report and explains how the dogs work. So we know that that's, that's the way that works. Well, there but, was that one other case where they were tricking the dogs into saying that there was hits in yeah. that other case prior to this one where the dogs came from the same uh, dog training place 
that this one of these dogs had came from. I think Ruth or one of them. Now, I find it interesting. I'm going to bring this up, and this is going to be a little bit of history, okay? A little history lesson, whatever you want to call it. Um, back in the day when, Tere when, I'm sorry, when Sandra Morris is run off the road by Stephen, we are right near Cuss Road. Now, it was on Old Y. Now, all I'm going to say is, for this all to have taken place at Cuss Road, that would imply that the original killer, whoever they be, who is more than more than trying to make it look like Steve's up to his old shenanigans again. Now, I ask you, we have damage to that RAV. Is it possible that the killer tried to make it look like Stephen ran her off the road and that that's what he was planning to do with Sandra is drag her back to Cuss Road through that route right to the quarry? And uh, Tony Ready? says on the YouTube, the dogs were following Teresa where Teresa went. Well, that's if they were given Teresa's scent. If they were given some other person's scent, that's what they were following. Right. We don't know. They say that they gave her uh, gave her shoe, but at this point, we it can't believe a word they say. Shoe. Yeah, it could have been any. It could have been the victim's shoe. There's not even a shoe in evidence. Not at all. Oh, what was the point you were going to make today, BB? About something that was. I was like, oh my god. Oh, uh, you print. said the fingerprints of Teresa inside the car. I said, well, I call kind of bullshit well, on hold that. on. Let's bring them up to speed so that they know where we are. So we were talking about, you know, doing the, the queso read. During the queso read, there is a part where it states that it is Teresa, it is Teresa Handbuck, according to Sherry Colhane, in her, as an analysis, in her scientific view, this is Teresa Halbach's handprint on the RAV door on the driver's side and side on the handle. And this is what Bibi answered me with. Okay, Bibi. Now they know why we were talking about it. Okay. Um, so I said in order to them, for them to find her fingerprints, her fingerprints would have had to have been taken. Like uh, she would have had to have been a criminal or something to get arrested to have her fingerprints taken. Or when else would you have your fingerprints? Hey, Sammy. Well, well, Sammy. Jeff, oh, if yeah. you work for, I worked for an agency one time and had to go through the FBI to be hired, and they took my fingerprints. So unless she's a criminal, or she's been fingerprinted, the victim, or she works for an agency that's taken the fingerprints, and then Jeff we have her run. house. We have her house. Yeah, or even yeah, applied, even Jeff. applied, because I think they use the um, uh, Scott Bladorn's uh fingerprints or they used his FBI application. And yeah, I've had my <laughs> fingerprints taken too, right? Okay, I wanna I wanna back up. Did you just tell us that Scott Blodorn applied for the FBI? Yeah, but it says that uh, in the castle, right? When uh, because uh, they, I haven't they got there were, yet. Uh, yeah, I think it's when they when they took the when they took the fingerprints, they uh, they were, it was sufficient to use the ones from his FBI application, was my recollection. Am I the only one who remembers that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. that's well, a big bombshell for me. Have, shouldn't, wow, shouldn't have had too many Mike's lemonades, I think. Well, if you're <laughs> right, if you're you know if you're reading that right, that's going to be a big deal to me. We'll have to check into that. That could be really, that could say a lot. But that's why hanging around and chatting you know, produces a lot of things to look into. Right, yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Huh. Okay. I'll see if I can find that. Well, that's and that will also. That also goes back to the theory that Teresa maybe works for an agency. What were you saying, Lily? I heard you peep up a little bit. Um, th that's a good reason for more than one person to be talking about these topics. Thank because you. Because we're talking one thing and people are coming up with stuff. The others are talking other stuff. It just... It's good for more than one person to be looking at this case. You know, it's really interesting. Like, <clears throat> I've had it happen where um, I read some article and I'm like, wow, that seems strange. Whatever. It's not enough. Go down the road a month later. I read something else. Completely different but connected. And I'm like, oh, where did I read the other thing? Or I heard somebody say it or something. And you start on your own kind of connecting dots. Um, 
because you've heard so many different views and stuff and you can start adding up the points. And that's where you can start building a storyboard. And without the experiences of everybody that has, has contributed to this case, none of us would be able to do this. There's not one of us that's going to solve this. I guarantee you, none of us. It's going to take all of us to do it. So, No matter how full of yourself you are. Thank you. Get over your ego. If you're in this case and your ego needs credit, get done with it. The only one that needs credit is Zellner. And that's to make sure that she understands she's got full backing from us. That she has a huge amount of supporters and, and people that absolutely stand behind her. That's whose name needs to be out there. And Stephen's name needs to be out there. Brenda's name needs to be out there. I don't care if you just call us some YouTuber. I don't, I don't care if you repeat everything we just told you and you don't know where you got the info from. <laughs> you know? Just keep sharing the information. Okay, Kaylee so said let's page to... 908 of Queso. See, we're not quite there yet. We're on 7. Right. Yeah, we finished 760 today. So we're going to be getting to it. That's huge. Thank you, Jeff, for sharing that. So you guys want to know when the FBI gets involved. Well, if Scott Blodorn is applying for the FBI... This means that he is not going to be doing the suspected um, narcotic dealer that I would have thought possibly happening. You get but where I'm coming from? Yeah. But he could be an agent. Yeah. He could be an agent. Doesn't say he got in. It says he applied. So yeah. yeah but you if know. you're applying, you're not a you're not a stoner. I don't know too many stoners that are like, yeah, dude, I filled out an app for the FBI today. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to get a certain uh, distance into the interview process before they'll actually take your fingerprints, too. It's not like... Yeah, uh, it's know. just the intent. And remember, this was way back in the day. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, we forget right. sometimes that these were different days, too, back then. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's see if we've... Um, uh, Jeannie says, at Tony, even a golf cart could have quietly gotten in and then got out. Oh, yeah. And guess what the cadaver, God, blah, 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 blah. cadaver dog hit on? Golf cart. Golf it cart. hit on a shovel. It hit on a bucket. Let's see. If we were playing a game in kindergarten and you're sitting around and I was like, let's talk Whoa. about everything the dog Whoa. hits on and what do you add up? You got a bucket. You get buckets. You get a golf cart. You get a conveyor belt that leads up to crushing rocks and gravel. You've got an end loader. you got Cuss Road. You've got um, the little red stoop on the back of the little, or the stoop on the back of the little red trailer at Deer Camp. Now we're finding out we've got the cell phone down at Deer Camp. Really? Kind of adds up that something took place at Deer Camp, whether it's a disposal site of the body um, or just evidence. Stuff happened. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Thank you, Lily. I don't know how to share these right now because I can't uh, <clears throat> share them on the board you're putting them on. So I don't know how to transfer them over to share. Sorry. But Lily did find um, property tag number 8040 in the FBI. Oh, yeah. Applicant. Um fingerprint card with Scott Blodorn's fingerprint, page 908 of the Castle. Now the Castle link Thank is you, in the Kaylee. Video. Thank you. Yeah, Kaylee and uh, Tony have been um, Kaylee, yeah. Dr. Silkman have been saying that. Yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. And thank you, Jeff, for bringing it up. Dang, that that changed my whole view on Scott Blodorn now. <laughs> Brian's <laughs> acting Kratz said that Ryan was, what did he call that again? How did he claim what Ryan was oh, doing? Oh, yeah, like a... Unauthorized, no. Untrained. No. Uh, untrained, uh, acting as a... Untrained, untrained. law enforcement agent. Uh, or, he got Scott Blodorn that has FBI aspects in his head. And where'd they get her fingerprints? Where in the hell did they get Teresa Hallbach's finger? Let's go to her house. Let's let's talk about her house. Okay. So they got her fingerprints from her house. They got them right out of her bedroom. How do they know that those are hers? We don't see any testing. They'd had to rule out her sisters, it. her mother, her brothers. Yeah. Um, 
anybody Scott, that, Ryan, uh, uh, any of her lovers that she might, her any of her lovers she might have had at her house. Um, well, let know. me tell you, let me tell you, they're going to have to absolutely rule out Ryan's out of the fingerprints in a room because he's and, been digging through stuff. And that first day, that first day when they went there, supposedly, according to the narrative, um, Scott and all her girlfriends are all hang, hang, uh, Ryan yeah. and all her girlfriends are hanging yeah. out there. On the third, so yeah. there's all fingerprints touching stuff. They had to go to the bathroom. Who knows what they touched? They might have seen her toothbrush and felt sentimental and picked it up for a second. Who knows? You know? Yeah. Edna Arthur says, "I cannot stand the horrible people that did this to Stephen and Brendan." Lyra says, uh, "Lyra, dark side of the moon." Why does he not want the dogs to follow the scent? Shady. Uh, Dr. Silkman says, or Tony, um, says, either Bobby or Scott T. followed Teresa after she left uh, Avery Salvage Yard. Or one of them was right in front of her, taking her, showing her where to go. Because they could have been just a step ahead of her and out of view. Or had a range um, for a hustle shot, perhaps. Uh, yeah, leading road. her to the hustle shot. On Cuss yep. Road, that they could have well cut her happen. off at the mailbox where Steve didn't have access to see at for a minute. Because if you yep. watch Zellner's reenactment, there is a place where the cars disappear at for a little bit. And then when they turn after the mailboxes to go out to the main road, then he can see them again. And that's or, where he's seen her make the left at. Or it could have been simply somebody sitting at that office that just stops her, waves her down without a car. And says, hey, you need to go to Cuss Road. And she says, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know where that is. And they, oh, let me hop in a car. I'll take off. You can follow me. And they get ahead of her. And they book it. And she's still making the turn. And then they wait up ahead for her, waiting for her to catch up. But they're out of view. But why, Dr. Why have, why says seen, the dogs oh, no, were sorry. following where Teresa went. What, Jeff? Why haven't we seen a picture of the rear quarter of the RAV4? Oh, I'd love to know yeah. that. And, you know, you look at that road because it's shaped the way it is. It would be easy for you to go to one side to kind of be out of the view of somebody pulling up in there. Mary Mary says she was arrested in 1999. Who was Mary Mary? And and where where'd you get that from, love? Interesting. Uh, Ashley Holt says you usually nursing home or assisted living. So I'm not sure what she's referring to. I do know in the castle we had some I think they were talking about maybe when you had to go for a background check to work with elderly people. Oh, like sure. Editors. Yeah. You don't give fingerprints. No. I don't think so I've either. Done, no, I know you don't. I was a med tech at a nursing home. It was my job to help do the GMPs and make sure Mary, that they were Mary all said fine. Teresa. Okay. Mary, Mary. Did you read some police report? Or did you see a source for this? Or did you just hear that? In other words, is it hearsay that you've heard? Or did you see something that made you believe that? Because that, that would be really important to know. Um, Edna says, um, wasn't Teresa Halbach's boyfriend an ex-cop or a cop? Not that we're aware of. He was supposedly a nurse. But yet, when I did his background check, he has no legal licenses held in the state of Wisconsin um, for um, work-related of any kind. So, don't know. Brittany Blake says, fingerprints are even taken if you're a server for a liquor permit. Ah, now that could be. That I have no idea, and I've never served liquor, so I don't know. But I do know that. I don't, um, I don't think they were back in the day. Well, even that, you would only be taking the fingerprint of the person. I don't, I don't the think permit. they are even to this day in this area. Well, I, I can tell you that uh, I help coach school girl, girl, school girl softball, uh, and, they, and they do a Corey check investi investigation to make sure that you don't have any priors related to juveniles. They don't take your fingerprints. They take your driver's license number yes. for that. So That I so had to do. With, uh, I Tasmir. think uh, you know, f fingerprints is a pretty high threshold of investigation. Yes. It's a privacy yeah. thing, too. Uh, Sasmir, you, you said you're a CNA and you have to carry a fingerprint card. That might be but in this, your state. This is, and this, this is, is also Wisconsin. now. Yeah. This is also now and that was then. Yeah, in 2005 and in 2019 in Wisconsin, you do not do anything with your fingerprints to become a CNA, med tech, or a nurse. So, 
Uh, my daughter's a nurse. My mom was a nurse. And my sister is a nurse. And none of them has have ever been fingerprinted for that. Yeah, my so. wife's a nurse. My mother's a, mother's a nurse. And that's the same for me. Okay. So that's a good question. Where in the world did they get this fingerprint um, verification that it was Teresa's? And we see no work of that verified in the case. So we don't see any evidence collected for fingerprints. We only see DNA evidence collected. So we're missing some reports apparently. Um, yeah, like anyone see. related to who the real killer was. Yeah. Sazmir said her rap four. Sazmir said that in way back then it was rare to have fingerprints ever for the job. And then she says for her rap four. Well, they say they got her fingerprint out of the rap four, but how'd they know it was hers is the question. Um, Edna, how can they say they have her prints if they didn't have a body to get fingerprints to compare to? Exactly. Thank you, what, Arthur. Yes, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Great point, Edna. Great point. Hey, Jeannie. I think Earl was sneaking around in the dark, like saying, I could do it with my eyes closed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, he doesn't oh know God. where every car is parked at in the lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, Holt, oh, Ashley Holt says, I had to when I worked in the nursing home for adult foster care. Okay. Well, it must depend on what state you live in. Because in Wisconsin and well, the counties that by, we're talking about, you don't give your fingerprints to work. Well, going by female. Ashley Holt's picture, she looks quite young. So that would be now versus back then. Okay. And my mom used to work in a nursing home and she never had to give fingerprints. Right. Um, Lisa B. said there is a CASO dispatch call called the third. The dispatcher says Teresa has been clean since 1999. Oh, my gosh. We're learning so much on this. This is why it takes all of you. I've never read that or even knew about that. Oh, will we be digging in now? Between Scott Blodorn trying to apply for the FBI and Teresa being clean since 1999, I'm not going to sleep for a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Mary Mary said, heard it on a police radio. They checked out. He they checked here out and said she had been clean since 1999. Awesome job, Mary Mary. Awesome job, Lisa. Thank you. Arizona, well, Sasmir. And in well, Arizona, wait, might wait. be that way. Wait a minute. How old would she have been in 99? Oh, she was 25 in 2005, right? So 20, uh, 19. Because mm -hmm. technically, your adult record doesn't start until after you're done being 18. So. Hmm. So they might just be referring to her entire adult life. Could be. And and we did look for, um, I'm pretty sure we ran her long ago when we were together doing this three well, years ago. Lisa I'm got sure another we, one. If you buy a gun, you're fingerprinted. That is true. Um, if you, not in Wisconsin, though. I can, no, I've you don't. Guns. Yeah, no, 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 you don't. The only time, if you buy a gun... Um, the only time you're fingerprinted is if you work where you use your gun for security or you are a police officer, they, they fingerprint you. Now for the here gun. they might for conceal and carry. I don't know no. so much about that, but not that I'm uh, aware here of you could, I could walk nope. in tomorrow to Walmart and purchase a gun and you can walk nobody into a gun will bet an eye buy the gun and, and walk out without giving your identification. Instantly, yeah. Instantly, yes. You don't even I have watch, to tell I don't, even have, are. Yeah. I don't even have to have a three-day wait or cool-down period show. or nothing. No. Yes. And like you said, you can go right to, even if you go to a certified dealer of a gun shop, I have been along with, I'm not kidding, dozens of guns being purchased through my family members and for hunting and so forth. Never once have they been fingerprinted. So it depends on where you live. But we are West talking Wisconsin, about Wisconsin. Wisconsin don't like to be real ruly like that with lots of rules on <laughs> gun ownership and bartenders and nurses. And yeah, Kaylee, she'd be either and, 18 or 19.
I'm trying to see if there's anything else we're missing. There's a lot here. Lily, you're so funny. She the... said you, it, in Maine you get the third degree for buying a gun. <laughs> 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 here in Arkansas, I don't know too many people that don't have one. Yeah. Right. That's kind of the way it is in Wisconsin. Look at all the guns they pulled out of the Dassey house, for God's sakes. Yeah, you know, in we, Virginia, according to Edna, in Virginia now, I don't know about back then, but now um, non-drivers and driver's license has a thumbprint on them. In Wisconsin, I just renewed my driver's license. All it is is a hologram of my picture. There's yeah. no thumbprint. I've never been fingerprinted in my life. And um, I have bought guns. I actually had an, F, uh, um, an FL license. Um, which means I could sell guns because I was an auction house that was in my personal name, never finger pin printed once. And I sold guns on a regular basis. Um, I actually know guns quite a bit. Um, also, I was a med tech for two years, never fingerprinted to do that. I also killed, cared for the elderly and um, was a CNA, never fingerprinted for that. That was just two years ago. Um, I don't have it on my driver's license. And basically, I've done some pretty serious jobs in my life and never had to be fingerprinted. Ooh, sounds like a party going on. That's my daughter. Ah. <laughs> in, uh, Graham says, hey, Graham, how are you? In the UK, minor crimes would generally only appear on your record for five years. So that could be why they say 1999 if it's the same true no here they they keep your record yeah um lisa b i bought a 38 special in michigan and had to be printed it was in 90 or 91 okay so in michigan you guys do i understand but we are talking about wisconsin and you don't you absolutely do not you can buy a gun anytime your heart desires and you will not be fingerprinted and if they do fingerprint you to buy a gun in wisconsin uh, they're trying to get they're trying to get your prints for something else, son, because <laughs> you're not supposed to do that. Um, Ronald Case, hey, uh, or Cass, I should say, did Auto Trader require prints? That I don't know I don't why know. they would. That would be quite a deal to work for a place for eight bucks yeah, an hour. Yeah, why you would they? We <laughs> don't even have to go since, in people's house. I was in sales since 1994 through 2016 as a vendor that requires sales permits for the most communities in Wisconsin. Almost all required prints to be given sales permit. Good oh, Lord. Oh, no, I'm sure they um, don't. Yeah. I, let me tell you something. Here in the state of Arkansas, um, they fingerprint our children for their lunch. Did you know that? that no, some of that's these kids horrible. In some of these schools... Um, in some of these states, check it out, find out. Uh, they have to put their thumbprint on a thing, and it takes their fingerprint, and that's that goes on their account, their file. Well, in Wisconsin, our kids have to punch in a nine-digit number in yeah. kindergarten to get their lunch. Collection of <laughs> biometric information is uh, gonna is gonna be big. I mean, that they're doing yeah. they're doing it under the guise of wanting to protect. Uh, protect exploited children. If somebody, you know, some kid gets nabbed, you'll be able to find them within some amount oh, yeah. of time because of all the biometric. But uh, you know, really, well, know, now a lot of jobs are starting to go to that too for the yeah. biometrics for your paycheck. Yeah, but that's just you know punching in, punching out. Right. Yep. Edna Arthur says, here's a thought, and it's a good one, too. I don't know how it works, but did Teresa have a juvenile record, and did they take her prints then? And that I will go with. That I would We say have no good. way to see a juvenile record. We have no way to see it. I agree. But at least that is an opportunity where I could see where her prints would have been gathered. Because if she did something that she shouldn't have that produced a juvenile record, she most likely would have been fingerprinted for that. So that I could see. It's a possibility. However, they don't say anything in the Castle Wealth fingerprints. So that's just something to stew on. We're not going to find the answer tonight, but I just wanted it brought up because we were sitting there talking about the fingerprints in the door from the castle. And I'm thinking about, you know, all this information on Cuss Road and everything. And BB's like, how'd they get her fingerprints? So I thought that was a great idea. I did, Graham. Thank you for that. So Graham sent me um, a tweet. I believe it was 
I'd have to look. See, now I'm even afraid to quote something because I don't know where I heard it from or read it from. I know, right? This is, yeah. Yeah. I'd have We've to go been... open my Twitter to be able to say who I got it from. I believe it was Mystic Jinx. I don't know. But I saw a report in a newspaper clipping that some other researcher had done. Um, and the newspaper report was on the 6th of November. And it stated that Teresa's vehicle had been found in the Manitowoc gravel pit. And that they were being very tight-lipped about any condition of Teresa. Um, and that was a newspaper clipping. We have several indications that this vehicle was not originally on the Avery salvage yard. Yeah, there's another newspaper clipping that you found with the archive that says that her friends found it uh, just off the property of Avery's in the rock quarry. Uh, yeah. Um, Scott, Scott Bricker says, did Earl want a picture on something in the gravel pit? Would that be her last spot? Great question. I um, find it interesting the FBI got sent all these little, what are they called, flash drives? Yeah. One of them's yeah. laying in the back of the RAV, unburned. And they're still saying they're too, 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 too um, how do you say that? Too degraded. decomposed. Degraded, thank you. Yeah. Too degraded to be able to get any pictures off. What about the one on the back of the RAV laying on the carpet? I'd love to see what's on that. Yeah, oh, me too. Know, oh, my right? gosh. I expect that we would see exactly what we we would like to see, which is some answers. So you're not going to get them, you know. Um, Ronald Case says, or Cass, I always say Case, it's Cass. I have my prints in over 30 communities in Wisconsin. Well, I'm sorry, sir, you are just not doing the right thing. You should be keeping your fingers out of everything because Wisconsin is <laughs> not the place to hand out your fingerprints. <laughs> He's, I was just joking. He says, I was selling produce from a truck and a route for over 20 years. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, maybe Teresa was a truck driver. Who knows? <laughs> Lilypad says, at Scott Bricker, supposedly Earl and Chuck wanted her take. Not supposedly. <laughs> this is a deal. The news came out. They made a broadcast about it. They had interviewed Steve Avery at the time when she's just missing. And they're like, well, so why did you call at 4.47 p.m.? And he said, she said, I had an interview with Stephen. He said he forgot to send her down to the quarry where they were wanting to sell the end loader. We know that Chuck has said that he's down, Earl's down there on the end loader waiting on Teresa. Well, didn't he didn't say waiting on Teresa. He did say that Earl is down there driving the end loader, front loader, whatever you want to call it, Using down to the it, quarry. Yeah. Using it. Um, Robert Fabian says that. Um, and we have the problem is, is that the cadaver dogs hit on that machine. The cadaver dogs hit on the quarry. The pelvic bones are found in the quarry. We've got the stuff right at deer camp attached to the quarry that they're finding cell phone, possibly, possibly a camera. I thought I heard camera. I can't be sure. Um, I keep listening to it over and over. I've actually, the only movie I've listened to ours over and over again is this Gus Road one because I just can't hear everything they're saying. It's so garbled up. I found that if you listen to them, like if you lay down and you just close your eyes and you listen, it for some reason, it tends to be a little bit easier to start picking up on what's the voices and the background and everything else. Well, I listened to it really good because I transcribed it so we could try and get the minute marks right to time the pictures out with as best we could. Well, Lisa says she does believe it's Jinx with the newspaper. I'm glad. I didn't want to throw out the wrong Yeah, name. it was Mr. I know Jinx, Jinx yeah. does and a massive, and has for a very long time, a massive amount of researching the archived newspapers. Um, we recently, in the last six months, did subscribe to some of those newspapers. And quite honestly, there's many, many times I go to take a clip. And because we're both of the same subscribing to the same newspaper archive place, I don't even have to go clip it because it says saved by Miss by jinx so she's done a lot of the groundwork for us um she's not one to not want to share she shares all the time freely um to to say that she's not sharing is something i would never say so i want to say thank you for sharing that with us and please continue to share i know you've been knocked around a bunch by a lot of people recently 
that are misrepresenting your work, which I also would take umbrage to. Um, but I stand behind all that you do, and I hope you'll continue doing the amazing work you do for Brendan and Stephen because those archive clips are so important. And I don't have time to go do all the work you've done. I believe you have something like a thousand clips already. So, um, well, and it's really hard when people knock you around to get back up, get back on the horse. Yeah, and continue down the road. When, when you're when you're literally doing this just because you care and you get a lot of uncaring people just absolutely kicking you in the shin to, to make their point and feel better about themselves and doing it wrongfully, wrongfully doing it. There were, I'm working on a case where people are wrongfully accused and, and convicted. And so are the other ducks. That's all we're doing is working on a case where people are wrongfully accused and they're convicted. And guess what we went through? being wrongfully accused of a whole bunch of crap and it gets really old and it sucks the wind out of you it sucks the inspiration out and it gets hard to stay on the case so i appreciate that you know you guys listen and everything but we want to know that we're making a difference with the crowd in the sense that we know brendan and steven are being protected and on twitter it did start to become kind of a big crowd of people and they were kind of gang stalking uh ducky and zoe uh, over this little teeny thing I found that I thought would be a good idea. Yeah. Okay, done with that. Yep. Okay. And so, by the way, I do not watch other YouTubers. I don't watch. So if other YouTubers have done something. in the lab, so. <laughs> I don't watch other YouTubers. I hardly ever watch other YouTubers. Well, I hardly even know some of hey, their listen. names. I do. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just feel like. You know, let's get over that because you know what? This was a there great room for ego. way. Well, this is a great way to help spread awareness and to get other people interested that might not have realized this is even going on. Because believe it or not, there's probably still people out there that are oblivious. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting that, you know, some of the things in this case are are so hard to understand. So we're stressed out, frustrated as individuals trying to work together as a team to to make sure that the right information gets out there. And we're so putting in some log hours too. Okay, I'm going to finish this thought. Okay, so my point being, if, where was, okay. So if, if we're working this hard to bring awareness to the case, why is anybody worried if somebody else is sharing similar information isn't that the oh i'm trying not to swear isn't that the goal i mean are you absolutely stupid at this point if you don't realize the goal is public awareness well i'm and just if gonna also, say if we're also not able to speak on something somebody else has spoke on then we all can't say nothing about anything in this case because it was all talked about three and a half years ago I'm at the point, I feel like some people are so blinded by their own ego that all they want to do is stand up and thump their chest and go, look what I found, look what I found. I don't care who found it. Get it online. Get it. More people need to find it. More people need to know. That's I, why we I, created a library. We don't build a little closet to hoard our crap in the back. You know, I'll tell you, Dr. Silkman said one thing today that I thought was very, very true. He said, you know, Ducky, it's very spontaneous. She's like, we're going to do a live. And then I'm like, when? Oh, well, well let me see what the schedule looks like. When, when, when did you want to do that? And, I, and Ducky's like, five minutes, and we all got to go. The reason I'm spontaneous is because I want them out now, not later. I want everybody to know what's going on. If we found something that's worth talking about, even if it takes us to a dead end and we found out that it was absolutely nothing, it was worth us digging into because we have found things that seemed really trivial that we've skipped over years ago. And all of a sudden we're like, oh, my God, we knew in 2011, I mean, 2015, 16, I should say, that the Hallbox had the bones. There were several of us that knew it. We, we had just no didn't lawyers. Know the significance. We had no lawyers to tell us that was naughty. 
And she is not, she's not lying, people. We have to sometimes get her white jacket out and tie her up. <laughs> and, you know, listen, you need to chill. Let's find out more information before we jump on this. <laughs> she's very, she just, let's get it out there. Let's, you know, let's share. Let's I'm not share afraid to be share. wrong. I'm not afraid oh, to be no. wrong. Oh no! I know. I know. I'll risk. I'll risk my entire reputation and everything if Brendan gets out of that place. I'll give it all up. I'll just be whatever. You know. I, I'm Crockett sorry. I brought Eagles this Eagles are not productive. Rather negative. Same as prejudging someone's intentions. That's right. And when you make a big boo boo, when you do make accusations and you find out you're wrong and you've wrongfully accused people, you need to be man enough to own up or woman enough. You do. And I've had to do that. Um, today it happened on Twitter. I thought this total individual that had nothing to do with what I was talking about was talking about my situation. And I found out after he cleared it up. And I had to apologize right away and say, oh, I'm so sorry. I totally misunderstood what you were saying. And I thought you were talking about my situation. And I shouldn't have done that. I'm sorry. And, and that's what I did. I did it publicly right away. Why? Because what's the point in being an ass about it? Well, just I, I'd like to just tell everybody out there, just stop being asses. Get your ass out there and do something. Yeah. Stop, yeah. stop pointing fingers. Just get in there. Dig in. And if you happen to discover that there's information that's not known because it's so much has been hidden, put well, it Anne, out. Well, and check the facts. We actually had given credit to the original producer of the soundbite of Cuss Road in our movie itself. And the person, the individuals that were claiming and making a complaint that we don't give credit had used the exact same soundbite in theirs and had given no credit to the original person. So kiss my ass. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, guys. Sorry about all that ugly duckly stuff. Something yeah, I'm sorry. Happens. I brought it back up again. I know we're yeah, really supposed to spot. do it at the beginning. Do but, you see this yeah. little spot nah, on my hip where good. I picked all my we're feathers good. off? <laughs> yeah. We're, good. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're good. Yeah. So anyway, you guys, I want to thank each of you for every week getting on here and participating. You don't just come on, sit back, listen. You participate. You drop like bombshells and tell me that Teresa has a clean record since 1999. Jeff comes on and he's like, hey, how about Scott Blodorn and his FBI applicant? I didn't even know any of this till tonight. So that's that's what I'm talking about. We need to continue to share. Anybody telling you not to share the truth of the documents, they're not going to help Brendan and Steven. So you do what you feel is right. And share, 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 share. Public awareness. Can't say enough, truthfully. Um, Dr. Silkman has a video coming out. He's already sent me the oh, groundwork yeah. framework. And it's going to be about EDTA. Oof. It's technical. Yeah, it's for you guys that are into the techie stuff. It is. Um, you got to remember. It's not a beginner DNA He knows what video. he's doing. You might want to go watch some of his other videos to kind of get pulled up to speed on DNA itself. Because this isn't a starter class that he's got on there. <laughs> it's like 101 EDTA. And, um, you know, by the time you're done with it, you're you're basically you're basically going to know more about DNA and EDTA than they did in the case and in the trial. <laughs> so um, I think it's brilliant. I think we need to understand it better. And instead of just accepting that the report is this or that, we need to understand what did they do the report on? Where did they get the samples from where they took the report? How do we understand the actual result rather than just being told what their interpretation is of the result? And that's what Dr. Silkman does for us in that video. I don't know. I may still be scratching my head when he's done. <laughs> it may be beyond me. Oh, Lord. We have a comment here. It says, uh, <laughs> Lisa said, let them place their lips on your feathered glutus maximus. 
<laughs> yeah, I have no time for ass clowns. That's right. Yep. Hey, sometimes you just get it when you're really, really frustrated and you know somebody in life is assuming all the wrong things about you and they're making a big, big show of it. And you know it's going to slap them back in the face when the truth comes out. You have to remember some people act like they're as dumb as a bucket of hair. They just act yeah, like that. I love that bucket and, and of there's hair. No, there's no excuse for their <laughs> their mentality because of the fact that they're not they're not um they haven't aligned their goals properly with with what you're on they're on a different kind of book they're reading out of a different book different goals i mean if they're a team member then they should be patting you on the back for for sharing more of the awareness um and besides we do give credit we give credit where it's due so we might not credit you if you talked about the rav but you know what i'm gonna create i'm gonna credit the person that that I find that brought that information to us and said, Hey, here's something I think you should talk about. I'm going to credit the person that put it online the first time. Once it's on the internet, it's public access from then hey, on. Ducky. Yeah. Was that dumb as a bucket of hair reference to Tony's girlfriend? It was in the way <gasps> out there. <clears throat> Boy, that's two buckets of hair. Yeah, two <laughs> on one head <laughs> of hair. Yeah, if if you're, I'll just say it. In my in my um, <clears throat> personal opinion, I can't. I kind of come up with that idea because I'm from the south and I've heard it in my family for years. I can't remember who to give credit to on it, <laughs> but it sure does fit Sherry Colhane. Oh, I don't know if we're allowed to use it then. If you don't know who to give credit to, <laughs> yeah, David's got a great point. Pay, pay no mind to them. It's only a few. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So we move along. So, um, aw, thank you, Mary Mary. She says we're fair. That's true. We try to be fair. So let's talk about Cuss Road. Let's get back to the burn spot. So a lot of you really think this is a burn spot. Should we take a vote? If you think it's a, if you think that the dark spot, let me go back. I'll share our thing. The kidney our, bean shaped spot. Yeah. Let me go back on to sharing our desktop here and I'll go grab a picture. And if you think this spot right here that I'm circling with my cut, my cursor on Cuss road is a burnt spot. Show, oh, I grab the whole picture now. Um, show us a thumbs up. So we'll give it a few minutes. We'll keep it on there and we'll get, we'll get some vote here. It's on the one, two, three slide here. It'll be interesting to see how many people feel it's a burnt spot. Now, the alternative to a burnt spot would possibly be a vehicle because where was that other picture where we see it? Let me see. Do, 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 do. Go. This vehicle. Oh, no, that's just people. Now, see, were you able to grab one. that picture I put in? Um, um, it, it has somebody else's six, work and writing seven. on it that's going to be bringing out their video eight. soon. Oh, oh, I'm not okay. going to take it. We okay. have like eight thumbs up right now. Okay. So if we're going to go with the theory that this is a burnt spot, then you guys tell me where's a burnt spot when the cops are standing around. We got another Pre. one, so that's nine. Pre-burnt spot. Yeah. So we would have a problem. If we want, if we walk that theory with the thumbs up that, you know, this is a burnt spot, if we go that route, then what you're saying, I feel like I'm Kratz right now, and that's a bad feeling. What you're implying then yeah. is that the cops have burnt a spot in the road. So I think they're standing around saying, this looks like a good spot right here. Stroking That's their chins just my going, little thought huh, bubble. Huh, huh. For them. Well, we do yeah. know that they keep everybody, including the dogs, away. We hear them talk about a cell phone. We hear them talk about burn barrels. We've got Josh Frandick coming down. He's got another thumbs up. Ten thumbs up. Ten thumbs up. I mean, there's a lot of us, so that's not a general consensus by any means. But those How many participating are leaning towards it. Six Maybe we want to do it, Jen. <laughs> no other car has that stuff around it. That's the thing. I mean, the outline there is that's not a, true. clearly not a shadow. Uh, it's the only one that's got that stuff around it. And it just doesn't look neat or, or, or organized or, you know, 
know, it, it doesn't strike or car shakes. Yeah. Or car shakes. Yeah. It did yeah. look like a car in the other one. I have to admit, the one that Lily yeah. said, it did look like. I mean, so there's stuff around that that's not normal stuff. Well, it's not. Maybe that was the I car mean, that brought in the stuff they're going to burn. Yeah, I have a, I have a, a Kayla. Uh, she says, or Kaylee, she says, burnt out car. So maybe it's both. Maybe they Could find be. a car and they're pulling it out from somewhere. But then how would the picture of them standing around get there? Well, if 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 we're walking this theory, which is different than that's a burned spot, if that's actually a burned out car, in theory, if we walk that theory, we have a completely different situation where what they would have done is they would have had to have found <laughs> A vehicle such as the RAV burnt and have pulled it out and parked it in the middle of the road. What do you guys think about that? Let's Possible. see how many people. It's let's, a let's take a vote. That's, let's take a vote. Um, because if it, you, if, it, if it was a car and it burnt there, it would no, burn the I didn't payment. say it burnt there. I know. I know. I'm okay. just saying if it was and it burnt there, it, it would burn the road. Uh, and well, and you know, if it was in the grass, if, was, if it was in the grass somewhere or in the, those little dirt roads with the weeds, it would have burned <laughs> up the weeds during November. Well, Kaylee said maybe it's yeah. a tarp over. <laughs> it, uh -huh. oh. <laughs> it, it would have caught on fire. It would have caught like on fire. I feel like we have an advertisement here. Unless like it was in the tape? quarry. Listen, do you like duct tape? Do you like tarps? Come to Manitowoc County. We got them. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I talk about the RAV, Manitowoc has a tarp somewhere. Every time I talk about bones, Manitowoc's pulling out a tarp. Every time we're, we're going to find out a shallow grave, look, it's a tarp. Lord. Live or dark side of the moon said, I think they blacked it out. Blacked it out? Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't we think that there would be fire department called in? They're already calling an ambulance or calling Not if it quad. was already burnt. Only I if they were know. burning it. Well, they still would have to have the fire marshal there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying to understand what Crockett's saying. She, he's saying, okay, go to Mind Chuck, episode 14. By the way, I've been watching them every night while I fall asleep. I thoroughly enjoy them. I know their voice is, is um, used differently through, um, what do you call that, Jeff? Mod modulator. Voice changer. Okay, yeah. voice changer. I feel dumb now. I thought the <laughs> modulator is what I was looking for. So I know that, and I get that because nobody wants to be talking about the stuff they're talking about, and, and you're all over the place with it. But um, I find that they do a really good job of re – they really know what they're talking about in some yeah, they cases. Do. Yeah. Um, they've misquoted a couple little things, but that, that's going to happen. Um, but I really find it quite intriguing, and I give them hats off for bringing awareness to the case. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed their program. I really well, do. I heard I heard they're quite funny, and I tried to listen they are, to them. They get the giggles. And I, tried to, I tried to listen to them because I'm all about the funny, you know. And uh, I just, between their voices and every three minutes, a commercial that you can't skip past, you have to watch. Well, I don't I, I have just, any problem with it, love. I know, I know. I just, myself personally, sure. I can't watch But them. as far as content, I think they do a fantastic job. They verify their facts. I listened to the one on the RAV where they were expressing how um, four-wheel versus all-wheel. And I have looked into this so many times, and I know what I want to say and get to it and get to the point. But I, I start stuttering because I'm not a car person, and the only information I understand is what... I'm reading and I can't quite put it in terms. So it was wonderful when they're putting it right out there so easy to understand that that if you have an all-wheel vehicle, you will have to disconnect all sides of the vehicle, not just one. You would have to take special special machines to be able to do this. It's not an easy job. You have to take apart far, far more parts to do this. And so there is no way what the um, crime lab John Ertl claimed to have happened could have 
possibly happened. There is no way. First of all, to get to the driver's side and be able to work in that area, there is limited space there. You only have about a six to eight inch clearance to get under the RAV. You can't do it. You would have to jack the whole RAV up. You would have to disconnect many sections of it. And then to make matters worse, which I don't know if they bring this up. Maybe they do. I think I kind of dozed off because I, I listen, try to listen at the end of my night, which is usually about 3 a.m. Um, one of the things you all have to remember is I don't care what they do to those front wheels. Those back wheels are still locked. So they have to do something to the back wheels because they're pulling it away from the tree by the ass end of the vehicle to get it out of there to do anything. So it doesn't really matter what they did to the front because even if that was locked, they could wreck the car. It's never going to drive again. But in order to pull it backwards, <clears throat> those tires are not going to budge in the back. Right, the, so the, the bottom line is that just that, that vehicle can't be, be where it is, oriented the way that it is, without somebody having gotten into the vehicle, put in the key, turn the key, and disengage the, the wheels. It's just that simple. Right. And that's and the state. I the also, state does not want us to say that. Well, and the state doesn't want to hear this either. But um, if you really look at the situation, uh, we we seem to have this vehicle in a precocious position that would almost almost present an issue in driving it into the position that it's in. It almost gives you the appearance because it's bending the trees over that it, it may have been set down in that place, such as, oh, I don't know. Um, could it be <laughs> Satan? No. Um, could it really be that it got set down with an end loader or a front loader that has been used to move vehicles around a lot? It what about sense. the trees? Satan, Satan sat it there, and God helped Pam find it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I should tell you that, buddy. <laughs> oh, no. oh, dear. Dear me. Oh, dear me. Whew. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, it was Satan. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I got to be able to do this, and you're going to be li like laughing, and tears are going to roll, and it's not going to be pretty. Everybody's going to be like, oh my God, Ducky, pull it together. Um, so, <laughs> the burn spot. All right, so if we're going to call it a burn spot, how did the burn spot get there if we have a photograph of law enforcement standing on the site with no burn spot? Something got burned there if that's a burn spot. It's quite large. We know that they, they um, have pictures before it was burnt, and they're not allowing anybody else down there. So let's say that they burned something there. Do you guys think that's a big enough placement to have burned a vehicle or are we talking something smaller look around you've got vehicles all over we have debunked something that little blue car on this picture at the top and i've shared my screen again i believe see that little blue car where the two dirt roads kind of the fork off? off from it that is a police officer's car yes that is yeah, not good. Is a picture good. that is clearly that, that, that dark green car at the top. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> kind of looks blue to me. It kind of oh, looks. Yeah, it kind of looks in between. Next the shot. Me. Next shot. Oh, it's blue. Next shot. Oh, it's green. Next shot. Oh, it's blue. Well, you know what? If this car was green, then blue, then green, then blue from the beginning to the end, I'd buy it. But it doesn't get. <laughs> it doesn't get blue until Pam, Pam finds it. So whatever. Mm -hmm. And she's even like, God changed uh, the color of it. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, I'm surprised that crossed it and like burn her neck. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go back up here. So let's hit on this. We're on Cuss Road. Why do we have an ambulance coming down and why is it getting rolled down? They say, can you have somebody, uh, Roll it down over here. I, I, li I like the suggestion that was made uh, during the live the other night that said that roll it is some type of police code for without sirens. I believe you're you, right. My <laughs> hubby actually said the opposite thing. My husband said that it's uh, with the lights rolling. 
Oh, okay, could be. Mm, I don't know. We'd have to check. That was his. I will. Take I, I'm on gonna. It. I'm gonna. I'm. T one's not with us tonight. I don't think. But if he is, I know, or, or is it? I'm he had quoting. great insight the other yeah. night. Yeah. He so. made a great comment. So T one said. He made many would, great comments. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what he said was. That, that really stuck with me is why'd they call an ambulance if it's a stump? They don't call an ambulance for a stump. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A stump doesn't need an ambulance. <laughs> All right. Well, some of the codes yeah. they're using is they're saying this is us and we're talking to this person and they were using codes for that too to indicate who was speaking and who was who they were speaking to and then those people would respond with codes. That's why you hear so many codes. Um, Graham's got a good point. God, I, I really like talking to you, Graham. Um, Graham and I have been working in DMs on Twitter a lot because this person Graham, just really Graham, pays attention. Make your way over to Discord. Yeah, yeah, come on over to Discord with us. And help um, us. So, one of the things he's saying is now keep in mind, they just got done saying the law enforcement are already telling you that they found some sort of tarp that is shallow buried. Zellner is saying that she believes it to be a shallow grave. Now, Graham made a point. He wants to ask, what about a tarp with Teresa's body burned or the victim's yep. body? Let's not get into Teresa's argument. Let's leave it victim. But they find they find a tarp with the victim rolled up in it. Just saying, if it's a black tarp, <clears throat> Jeannie, could it have been a distraction? Another great point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they Another also said point. they also said a pallet with plastic on it too. Yeah, yeah. That so was why one of would their they? Use, why? Let's get into the distraction part for a minute. Why would they want everybody off of the Avery property and make sure every single law enforcement isn't around? What day are we talking? The seventh. Somebody's breathing heavy. Yeah, I and hear it's it. not me. Not sure, it's not me either. Somebody's getting my ear all kind of fuzzy. Um. Okay, so if, if, if they're doing this on the 7th, if it was just a distraction, what are they trying to do over at Avery's? Well, what all happens that time frame? A lot. We have the key on the 8th. We have the bones on the 8th. We have the license plate, I believe, on the 8th. Um, all kinds of great parts, huh? That could be a distraction. Um, I do want to bring up something before I forget. So today in the castle... And Dr. Silkman, I'm going to need you and Jeff and all the researchers to check this out and all the listeners as well as armchair sleuths and armchair detectives, whatever you do. Um, in the CASO, we have a report that the crime lab was checking the um, bullet, um, what is that called, guides and anyway, rifling? the rifling. They were checking the bullet out on November 05. But we don't find the bullet until March, right? So yeah. how are they checking that? And it states in there, right, like the line I read. Let me see if I can go find that. Jumping the gun again. Oh, by months and months and months. So I don't know if I'm sharing my my um, desktop, but I'm going to grab this real quick. We're going to whip into the castle here for a second. I know it's nothing to do with Cuss Road. But I can't forget to talk about this. And I, I wanted to make sure we hit on this. Um We'll give it just a minute to load the queso, and then we're going to jump dive into it. I think it's like on like probably 755 or something, maybe 754. Let me see if I'm sharing the desktop on this. I see a blank white page. Oh, you do? No, I don't. Okay. Am I no. sharing my desktop? No, I see. I'm looking. I'm, I'm in Hangouts right now, though, but... Well, I can't. I'm asking them because they're the ones seeing the screen. Okay. okay. We're seeing. Hold on. The Hall of Mirrors. Now it's bumbling. Okay. Now it's the paperwork. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's before that. Boom. Nailed it. Woo. Okay. 754. I want to read this to you. On. 05-1106, I am Beth Reeder of the Calumet County Sheriff's Department, received a report from the Wisconsin State Crime Lab. The results of the test indicate the bullet is item FL, 
was fired from a Marlin rifle in item DD. The bullet in item FK exhibits the same physical class characteristics of the rifle in item DD and could have been fired from that gun or any other with the same class char characteristics. Listen, listen, it should be noted that Wisconsin State Crime Lab had received this evidence on 11 2105. Item FL, they go on to say, would be one sealed paper bag containing a 22 inch caliber bullet exhibiting 11 remaining of 16 original land groove impressions with a right hand twist. Excuse the hell out of me. How did these people do this test on 11 2105, guys? <laughs> that doesn't make any ESP. sense. Yeah. Mm. You'd think they were talking about another bullet fragment that they found. But they're not. It's yeah. item FL. They're not. Yeah, FL. I'm just saying. One more place where they have once I again wanna, hold, the hold gun. On. Wait, wait. Hold on. Shit. I want to make an apology to whoever wrote the castle that I didn't give you credit. Okay. Anyway, um, the FL. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. Um, it should be noted. I mean, this person, Mark Wiegert himself, He's writing this. He's saying it should be noted the Wisconsin State Crime Lab had received this evidence on 11 2105. How? How did they test item FL when it was not found until March? Time machine. ESP. Oh, we found the time answer, travelers. Somebody hmm. answer that to me. Now, if that doesn't tell you they knew what they were going to have been say ahead of time, what does? Is this God. not enough? What did they do to her people? head, Brendan? What yeah. did they do to their? What did they do to her head? Oh yeah. Why do you want to know what they did to her head? Why? Because you're sitting on a 22 uh, inch caliber bullet that you plan on telling us that's going to have Teresa Hallbach's blood on, or um, DNA on it. There's no bone. There's no blood. What's the date of the report? It's in May. 06, May 11, 06. But that's not what he says. It should be noted. He, he takes the time to type this. But the Wisconsin so State Crime Lab note. has received this evidence on 11 2105. Even nails the date, 11 2105. Hmm. It's just all kinds of wrong. All kinds of wrong. All kinds of wrong. Um, I remember somewhere seeing information on that and I'll have to get back to you about it. Okay. But I think there's yep. Don't so don't go too far with that yet. I know we're gonna have some story you're gonna tell me about. He was referring to just the idea that they planned on testing or something. But the way he words it in that report <laughs> that where he's found in the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I know you got a story about how Mark Wiegert jumped in the future, grabbed the bullet, came back, talked to Brenda Dampy. But the truth is, they're reporting. I'm tired of the excuses. I don't Didn't care if you fill out that form way, beforehand that she knew she was gonna make a mistake. Let me guess, it was a typo. No. <laughs> oh no, no, no. Um um Fassbender, he jumped to the future. That's how he lost his eyebrows. Well, <laughs> they blurred off in the, the time machine. <laughs> yep. Yep. They went from time machines. There we they go. They off in the time That's machine. Be it. Yep. So that crime is solved. Now, on to the next. Right? Okay, back <laughs> to Cuss Road. Sorry I went off on that tangent, but that's been bugging me all ding day. I'm like, ar, 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 ar. So um, how's the group doing? What, what, what date? What date did they take the uh, the rifle over Stephen's bed? Uh, somebody help me. Was it the fifteenth? No, 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 jail. no. It was ninth. It would have been. Eighth, it would have been I the ninth. Eighth or ninth? Yeah. They, yeah, the right the around. He, went... he was arrested on the ninth, and it was they took possession of the gun. Um, I find it interesting that mm. I remember reading somewhere in the queso or something, um, one of the reports where they state that the gun was actually by the kitchen door. Yeah, And I'm like, I thought it was, and in a different report, it says it was hanging up. So right. I'm like, was the muzzle loader the gun by the kitchen door? I just don't get it. The one by the kitchen door was when he got into that argument with Jody and she called the police. Oh. I believe, I believe he had at that time, the, the gun was just 
in the kitchen. Because I wasn't Maybe. reading that when I read that. This was reporting about um, Stephen Avery was being arrested for a felony charge as a felon that was had possession of a firearm. And they were saying that they were confiscating guns and they were listing them out. And in the report, they stated that the gun, they don't say which kind. So I'm wondering, is it the muzzle loader? Might have been the muzzle loader because we never do know where that was stored. Maybe. But yeah, there you go. Lily, great point. If uh, this whole arrest thing with, uh, they were, Jody is claiming way back then that he's doing all this and there's a gun involved. Well, when he had been a felon back then. Why not arrest him then? Right. All right. See, it doesn't work the way it should. They, were, they just, the games they played. Well, and Fassbender and Weger um, go out of their way to make sure that we know that he is a felon, but yet he has a deer hunting license. Well, I'll tell you what, in 2005, you couldn't get, and you can't now, if you're a felon, you cannot get a gun license. And it right. wasn't a bow license. They say gun license. So, well, then that again, do we really want to believe everything that's written there? Oh, yeah. of course not. <laughs> True. They, they lie. Brit Brittany, um, <clears throat> oh, Jeannie says at Tony, could be worse, better than being alone. The dog gets a free pass. Brittany Blake says, why would someone bury a body in the center of the road? I know it isn't a busy road and is a dead end. But yes, it looks like something was burned. It does. It really does look like it's so dark, you guys. Oh, so Tony's seen the same thing as I have. Okay. Okay, that no. I'll have FL, to dig some research out. I could be wrong. I could be yeah. wrong. FL is wrong. Uh, it's a different. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna have to find out why, because uh, if they're gonna if they're gonna name a piece of evidence that's a bullet FL and they're collecting that in November, and then they find another bullet in March, and they decide to name it FL. Well, that's like naming all your kids Jed. Please. <laughs> Please my brother, don't tell me that's the reasoning Because I won't buy it My brother Daryl and my other 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 brother there was 11 So um, Kaylee says I think I'm going to let uh, Dr. Silkman in here I don't know if he wants in or what Well, well he could have grabbed the two, link And three, came in four, anytime five. he wants Yeah there's there's plenty of room We still have another oh, slot yeah. Okay all right. uh, Kaylee says, does anyone know what time they were all called to Cusro and what time the ambulance was called? No. We only know that they went to Cusro twice. We do have the approximate times on the Queso report, but they don't mention an ambulance on the Queso report. So the only time that the ambulance is mentioned is on that phone call. And we know they were there for two days because he said, yeah. uh, I'm going to come back. I'm going to be back here tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Edna says, going back to the fingerprints, I just thought of something. When I was a kid growing up in West Virginia, for a period of time, they were fingerprinting children in case of child abduction. Well, I it's don't always know. Been Wisconsin, voluntary. It's always been voluntary up here. They had those little kits you could get to do your kids' fingerprints at home yourself. And then you yeah. filed the kit away. And then if yeah. something happens, you had the kit to pull out. I actually out. have those for my kids. Yeah, where you I've had them, them before, too, thing. yeah. But the fingerprint doesn't go anywhere, but that could have happened. But the problem is it's not documented anywhere. I used to fight in the old days. They'd say, well, it is the same RAV because, you know, um, the the VIN numbers on eight places of that machine. So there's no way they could pull that off. But now you guys all are aware that obviously they didn't even check that. So the problem isn't that we couldn't get her fingerprint, where would it come from? I'm saying, if you look at this case, show me a report where they've got a collection of fingerprints from the people that they are eliminating off of Teresa's fingerprints. Where did they get the original fingerprint from? Her house? Where's it in any report? I mean, they tell us when they're getting dirty panties and clean panties. They tell us mm -hmm. when they're getting her vibrator. So why can't they tell us where they got the fingerprints in the reports? And it's an oversight in their part which really presents a problem when they you have never a lot thought of nefarious behavior. All of us, they never thought all of us would be looking at this and scrutinizing every report, every comment, every movement, everything we can get our hands on. So Kelly Cowell says that it could be the red one you see, you would see red. It It's way too black to reflect of light to shine 
a red to black. Okay. So let's go back to the good PowerPoint. Good one, Kelly. Let's, good one. That's yeah. a good point. Let's look and see what she's saying. All right. Let's go to this one. I know we're only flipping between three pictures. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot more to give you. Oh, that's not the one with the big burnt spot. To do, to do, to do, to do, do, do. Oh, we were just all over the internet trying to find pictures for this. And believe it or not, I think we got every one that we, we got our Hello, hands on, Tony. we got in here. Hey, and Dr. We came up, and we hey. came up with ones that some of us had never seen before. So, yeah. Okay, look at this. So we're on this dark spot, and Kelly's saying, now you can see a reflection on that blue vehicle up there, can't you? Mm -hmm. You can see shadows of different colors. You can see the side of the vehicle, um, the top of the vehicle. You can see there's a darker part on the back. But look how dark the back part of that little vehicle looks. It looks really, really dark. It doesn't reflect light on the back side. And then you look at the pictures beside it and look up there. There's the vehicle. That's a cop car sitting up there. So what's so dark on his vehicle that's not reflecting? It's the same uh, hue yeah. as the dark on the road. There are also no cars casting shadows in that picture either. True. There are no shadows. That I mean, look at the yellow vehicle, the white vehicle. Um, there's other vehicles along the side. You can see what appears to be people standing around. Um, but at this moment in time, I'm wondering, is that cop car's trunk open? Is that why it's so dark? Because we know it's a cop it car. You're looking at the other picture. Yeah, it does so appear to be. So let's say that that trunk is open there. Why is the trunk open on that vehicle? I mean, sure, they could be getting supplies. But it just seems weird. I don't trust them. You know that. Yeah. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Yeah. I if, if I could just put in my two cents worth. Of course. Uh, I'll, I uh, I would be very cautious about trying to come up with any conclusions uh, based on that particular image. It's yeah. very low resolution. And I think there are better images around, okay. uh, possibly not of that particular image, but images very close to it. With the black spot on it? Not with the black spot, no. Well, that's what uh, I'm talking about is black spot. Yeah, but again... <laughs> I mean, I've I, got pictures of that road. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm saying you've got to show a little bit of caution because what you can see, Rubber Ducky, is distortion distortion of the image right. uh, and, and especially if you try and blow it up uh, things just get out yeah, of the I agree. Of that I'm not trying to draw a conclusion spot. we're just having an open discussion about it oh. I'm trying to analyze of only what that we can of course. Um, now look at this you've got the yellow truck I can see on the yellow truck mm -hmm. that there's a difference between the top and the back side and the front I can see the dark of the tires then you go over here, you've got a little white blob. You can still see a shadow right along the edge of it where there's something dark. Go to this other next blob, you can still see a darkness along the edge. I get that it's pixelated like crazy. We're not drawing a true conclusion. Hmm. But, but why would that one spot have more distortion than the rest? In reference to what's around it, I can see that big white truck. I can see the nose of it. I can see that it actually has a height on it compared to the other vehicles. I can yeah, see the two dark tires. I can see dark tires on it. I'm looking over at the left picture. I can see that's a cop car. I can see the color of it. I can see how it's built. And then I go over here and I can see actually where the windshield is on the car, where the trunk is open or something because it's very dark there. I can see there's something white beside it. I can see all that. But you get to this little dark spot and the depth mm -hmm. disappears. There's the depth that's missing from the picture if it's a car. Yep. But again, it's low resolution. Uh, but don't we have a better image of that? I don't. This is the best one I have. Right. But don't we have this other... one? But it's, yeah. I mean, it's the same scenario. Yep. It's exactly the same picture. I just cut everything off of 
around it. Yep, but don't we have flyover video uh, pictures as well? I don't. Mm -mm. We have that I other have one none. that had a little that uh, the one that Lily commented. She had a different picture where it looks more like a car. Well, that's in Silkwind's upcoming video. I don't want to take it out of there. I didn't <laughs> realize it was. I didn't. I didn't watch his video yet. No. Have to, that, 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 we were busy no. on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I definitely concur that we do have to be very cautious about drawing our conclusions. Um, but, I do. But I think it's completely appropriate to raise all the questions that we're raising. Yes. There are a lot of yes. questions being raised. Yeah. Um, and and th those could be easily allayed if the f police would only release the thousands of photographs that they took during that time. Like, yep. Where are uh, they? Robert, do you know what I noticed? Yep. Oh, go ahead, Dr. Silkman. I was going to say that's not in my upcoming video. So you can talk about it. There's no problems at all. Okay. Um, I want to notice something. Um, it says many vehicles dead in. Can y'all see that? Yes. Okay. Now we're going to have a close up picture. So this is fact. So this is one way to tell what kind of resolution we're dealing with. If you look at Cuss Road and you look at the two forks at the end of the road. So we go left and we go kind of right. One's gonna. One would have taken us to quarry. One would take us to dare camp. Okay. Kind of looks we like have a to, snail. Yeah. Call, and, I call them antenna looking. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So see the blue car up there, guys. See that? That we know that's the cop car. Then you see this like faint yellow line that curves around the edge of it on the right at the top there, and then that line goes straight back into the woods. Do you see that? Mm-hmm. No, that is actually just the tape itself. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that under very distorted resolution, and it's mm. still yellow. And from it's very far away. Dark. And from very, very far away. And it's a small we know object. That, yeah. So we know that the resolution isn't so bad that we're going to get a significant color differences we can look we see a yellow vehicle we see a yellow vehicle we can see a, a white vehicle we see a white vehicle we see a blue vehicle it's really blue in this case so you know it's strange i just think we need to really listen we need to pay attention as a whole as listeners and supporters anything on cuss road we need to dig into it because something happened down here on cuss road now i will be honest we have been working on Cuss Road. It's been my main spot for a long time. I have often, often got stuck on Deer Camp at midnight on chat because everybody knows that my theory basically is that I believe that's where a hustle shot took place um, or it was, it, it was the murder scene or it was a dismemberment scene, the disposal scene. And mm -hmm. I think it involves the Deer Camp. And I've been on that for long time so i'll never be able to walk away from cuss road until they come clean with this story and i appreciate y'all joining me on cuss road i feel like it's the curse that we can't walk away from because there's enough evidence that says something obviously happened here we are getting ambulances coming down there we've got all of the entire law enforcement coming down here um they're talking about on this dispatch call a cell phone they're talking Teresa hallback we hear i think we hear i think we hear avery uh, west of Avery or something. Um, and we have Josh Randit being called down there and let through. And him and the crime labs are the only two being let down there. So something is taking place here. I don't think it's just a distraction. I think I think that's honestly, I personally think that's where electronics came from. Uh, there's no doubt that something major has happened down there. Big, very big. I had to let my dogs out. Somebody's knocking on the wall or something. Um, okay, so I don't know. Like you said, we don't want to draw conclusions. I definitely heed your words. I think they're very important. But does it spike my curiosity? Do I lean? I mean, after all the review that we've done, do we feel that that's still a burnt spot, even after seeing there's no burn spot with the cops standing there? A lot of us do feel that way. Well, and we have a right. And we have a, 
and it we have a right a to our, and we have a right to our personal opinions. Oh, yeah. of course, of course. Yeah, it does look like something's burnt. I mean, the car is not going to be kidney shaped. Unless, no, and it, wait, 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 no wait. I'm going to retract that. I'm going to retract that. The car would be kidney shaped if it was burnt into a big pile and had been hammered on, maybe. Um, but this does look kidney shaped. I'm trying to look at the other cars. I don't see any other cars shaped that way in that blur. What do you guys think? Somebody give me some idea on the chat. And then we're going to go ahead. We're going to call it, it a night. It could be other debris. Uh, besides. It could be other debris. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going to go hang out in Puddle after? Sure. So I think that's a good if idea. If somebody wants to put up some links. I think Lily already did. Yeah, she already did. Yeah. Um, I did one. Yeah. Maybe throw another one up there. So. Yeah. In case anybody if wants to follow they us. Did, let's play this out. You know, we have burnt electronics, right? Let's play this out for a minute. What if, a big question here, what if, could they have um, found all this electronical stuff sitting over there in the burn barrel um, that's at the deer camp and uh, decided that that was going to screw up their theory from the state perspective and so they just dump it on a cuss road and burn the shit out of it? Okay, I have a problem with that because ash and stuff would be gray, not black. What if unless, they okay, unless okay. they burn what something if, black like a tire or a mat a out of, or a mat? I a the mat. tarp would burn up. The tarp yeah. would burn well, up it, like unless it's something mat. rubber. What it if it wasn't would the tarp? Burn up and what turn to it, ash. What if they found the actual mat that we're missing out of the raft from the back? That might up. be rubbery enough to make a melted black oozy like a tire. Okay. I don't, there's too much dimension to it. I just, I see a vehicle, a black vehicle, and there are people standing around in okay. bags, equipment. I don't know about the other stuff, but. Can you make out donuts? Oh, somebody's <laughs> getting donuts? <laughs> I'm well. hungry. I heard donuts. <laughs> I had I had cookies, so I'm all right. Oh, Lord, so I'm can you make them out in that picture? Right, it's, they're standing around and eating donuts. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, yeah. Oh, hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, hot dogs. Yeah, yeah. You know. They're on their Haley donut says, break. Switcheroo. Somebody brought down donuts. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So for the listeners out there, this is your chance. We're gonna go ahead for about five more minutes. Throw your questions out there, um, or comments, and, or comments. Um, and it can be about whatever you want to talk about. You guys have the floor. And uh, we'll concentrate on reading them out there. Mary Mary says, it is 2.40 in the morning. I will say goodnight, duckies. And Dr. <laughs> Silkman, love you all. Love you too, Mary. Love night, you too. Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Edna, this is a YouTube link. However, the Puddle Chat goes to a place called Discord. Um, you do have to have a Microsoft Office. No, you don't. That's no, a different program. That's a library. Me. Okay, yeah, you just click that. It'll you have to, to have download. a verified email, though. Yeah, you do have to use your real email. Um, but anyway, you'll have you, to verify it. Yep, you'll have to go to your email account, and you'll have to say, yep, once you register that you are a real person. Um, we've had to do that for security purposes because, unfortunately, our server got hacked, so um, I didn't – I woke up one day and couldn't get my own server – um, and, uh, that was a big pain. Um, I had to be and invited then, into the server. So now we're taking some precautions. We were a little, uh, gullible there and trusted too many people. So you do have to verify your email address, unfortunately, but once you do that, um, you'll be brought right into the room with us and we'll be there waiting for you. And you can talk to us just like you are now you get to type, or if you want to talk, you can come on the voice chat. And even if you don't want to talk in the voice chat, you could still listen in like you're doing now. We do have a lot of people filling up in the in the puddle, I see. I'm getting notified left and right. Um, Lyra says something really good. I think they blacked it out themselves to really hide what's there. You know, they could use black spray paint to cover up their mess. Over time, that would wear off. Or they could have, over the shot of it, have colored it in. True, true. Like we if might scribbling out Photoshop somebody's or... name before you show a screenshot, like if you scribble out their name. Right. 
Right. Well, there's a lot of there's a lot of what ifs, a lot of questions, but I think it's really good that we're looking at Cuss Road. Um, I think it brings to light um, where the actual um, crime may have taken place. And so we don't want to just walk away and say, well, that was a good thing. We need to really keep digging. And so I encourage you guys to dig, 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 figure out what you can on Cuss Road. And let's try to uh, pull that together. Meanwhile, till I see you guys next, um, please continue to join us for the Castle Read. I promise you there are days when I'm just floored by what I read. Now, I will tell you guys, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but we have the next two weeks of um, Fassbender and Weegee there wigging out on Brendan and basically just ruining the the entire again. case again <laughs> for two weeks solid. What's interesting, though, is the way they put it today in the Castle Reef was, listen, Brendan. This is this is Fassbender. I'm going to I'm going to I'm not quoting him. I'm going to just give you my take on what he was saying. He says, listen, Brendan, last time we talked, there was some stuff. The evidence didn't quite fit. Uh -huh. And uh, so we're going to have to have you start over. <laughs> yeah. So in order to get the evidence to work, we got to start over. Now, what's interesting is Lynn, this puke of a man, Lynn Kaczynski. Lend me out. Infuriated me today. Infuriated me because he writes an email to Weigert or Fassbender. Can't remember which of the Tweedledee or Tweedledum got it. But what happens is this: <laughs> he writes and says, "Listen, um, you can go ahead and interview Brendan without me there or Michael Kelly. But Michael Kelly has a report or two for you that he'll gladly hand over to you. But hey." I've made sure not to notify the Avery family, particularly the Avery family, quote unquote. And I've talked to Brendan and I'd advise him not to mention it to the Avery family either. But go ahead and question him on when he's in here facing charges more about the case. We're good with that. Oh well, and God. then he left to go on National Guard duty. Lend me out, Kaczynski. That. Yeah, it was in that uh, TMZ interview. Where no, I know. I Harvey don't want to about his military background because I just can't imagine that he can even touch a gun. <laughs> Probably shoot the cat. <clears throat> um, Edna says she has a Facebook account. Y'all can text me if you want to. You're welcome to come on. It's a public group, Edna. Um, um, there's also, we also have a Facebook page that Zoe runs. Yeah. Zoe runs a really nice page on Facebook for the ducky, um, for all duckies and all armchair sleuths or just if you're just starting in the case and you just want to get in to dig into some stuff or, or whatever, you're welcome to go on there as well. But we spend most of our time in Discord. You'll, you'll find us there. Yes. Ira says she will rewatch in the morning for bits that she missed. And, uh, with that, you guys, I want to say thank you so much for joining us. And and if you didn't do the crime, mm -hmm. you, you should, should do, do the, the time. 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 <laughs> We're talking about time. We're like never yeah, on time with yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's There's okay. Too many else, Everything yeah. in this case is out of time. It's off time. Yeah. So that just fits, right? So much love to you guys. I will be joining you in the puddle chat probably in about 20 minutes. I'm going to go see if I can grab a bite to eat. Um, maybe 10. We'll see how it goes. And I will see you there. So thank you guys so very much. Bye, thank everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. All right, guys. Let me see where the button is.